Welcome back. You've probably seen the signs in North Jersey, welcome to the embroidery capital of the world. Well, not so much anymore, but holding on to that history is important to a whole lot of people. Our Kimberly Kravitz explains. Welcome to the embroidery capital of the world. Well, at least at one point in time. These streets were home to the industry that has just about disappeared over the last 20 years. But we managed to find some special people who work to preserve these threads of history. It was just something that was so much a part of the, you know, the fabric and the rhythm and the hum of life. I don't, when you he hear the machines, I guess, up at Deerbrook, you'll see they have this wonderful ch -ch 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 that I think everybody in this neighborhood would recognize and really uh, remember with great fondness. Embroidery capital no more. Each day, thousands of people drive under this famous sign on Route 495. But the once booming embroidery industry is unfortunately becoming more of a memory. It really started in about 1870s. It was created by immigrant communities. And then over the years, you see the, the wave of immigrant communities change, where at first it might have been Western European immigrants and then Eastern European immigrants and then um, more recently um, immigrants from South and Central America. The number of embroidery factories in Hudson County dropped from 400 in 1996 to about a dozen today. In the 90s, the industry started to decline and that was partially because um, they couldn't compete with sending the manufacturing overseas. Despite all this, one man persevered in an industry that all but left him behind. Ed Parsegian owns this embroidery shop in Gutenberg, and his business is still going after all these years. So how long exactly have you been in the industry? 75 years. You've been doing this since you're 15? Yes. It was some very lucrative years, you know. But now, this business is not like that. We're just about get by week by week. Ed's shop, Deerbrook Fabrics, has been around since the very beginning. In fact, his is one of the few shops that remains open. But in order to do so, Ed has had to adapt to the new technology in his industry, which comes with a hefty price tag. We hear about this new machine that's in Switzerland, you know. And uh, I went over to t look at it over there, and I was impressed looked it over and I decided, you know, we're going to get... How much did it cost you? 750000 at that time. That's the busiest machine we have, you know. It's running all the time, practically. And unfortunately for many, people were replaced by new technology and computerized machinery. There were a lot of jobs lost. I think the industry at its... Uh, in the 90s had about 4,400 people. It really diminished. And it, you know, it was something that people were proud of doing, and I think many of the immigrants got their first job in this country in the embroidery industry. This northern New Jersey historical landmark has really created the fabric of our country in more ways than one. The factories were still producing so many things that it would resonate so much with American culture, like the stars, embroidered stars for American flags, patches for the military, for police, for fire, for Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts. I mean, there were just so many wonderful things that they were making, and the stories were fascinating. This $300 million industry was booming here in northern New Jersey, with a big part of its success due to its proximity to its neighbor, New York City. There was the close proximity to the garment district in New York City, which was very vibrant and still is. And so it made sense to have, you know, that additional, you know, manufacturing element of embroidery and creating and lace as well um, to also, you know, help support the garment district in New York City. Neighborhoods such as Union City, Fairview, Gutenberg, West New York and Jersey City are proud of their roots in the original embroidery industry. So it's great that we recognize it and remember it here in Union City and make it a part of our, our everyday lives today to let people know why we became so strong as a community, why it's so strong in our, our rich history of Union City. And as for Ed, he has never let the competition get in the way of his love for his craft, which has brought much success over his long career. I think China has really taken over, you know. But sometimes they can't deliver on time either, you know. 
And that's where we come into the picture. And when we, we promise something, we bend over backwards to make sure it's out on that day. Over the years, these neighborhoods will be remembered for their rich history and their role in the beloved embroidery industry. Reporting in northern New Jersey, I'm Kimberly Kravitz for Jersey Matters.